Hey everyone, it's Ali Lindley here from One Number, and today we're gonna to take a look at how to find the highest and lowest values in your window using a window function. If you've never used a window function before, that's totally okay, I'm gonna walk you through it. Our example today is this one. We're taking a look at some spark lines. So each region in Sample Superstore, and you can see that for each spark line, there is a lowest and a highest value, uh, and, and those are differentiated by different colored circles. Okay, so this is what we're going to try and build. Now, the beauty of this is that as we filter through various categories, those highest and lowest points update based on whatever information is left in our view after we filtered. Now, that's the beauty of the window function. So we're going to dive into that a little bit more and unpack it just as much as we need. Uh, but we're going to put this together. You're welcome to try and build this view uh, using Sample Superstore. That's totally cool. If you want to save yourself some time, you just want to get straight to the practice, why not download this? It's in the description below on my Tableau public, and then you can just fire it open and follow along as we go. Okay, let's dive into it. So I'm going to navigate to this worksheet called Sparks 2, and I'm going to create a field called Max Sales. And I'm going to say something like this. If the sum of sales equals the window max sum of sales, then sum of sales. So what do we ask Tableau to do? Well, we've just said, hey, if any of these sum of sales values that you encounter are the same as the maximum sum of sales value in the window, then return that sum of sales value, right? That's all we've said. So search through all the data in the window, return the maximum sum of sales value. Let's hit OK. We can just duplicate this because now we need a min sales value. And the logic is exactly the same, except we change max to min and we're good to go. OK, so we're going to put this all together uh, and, and help to, to isolate those values. But let me just say that if this is interesting to you and you want to learn more about Tableau, why not join us for one of our courses? Uh, we've got some super cool courses coming up all the way from Tableau beginner courses to Tableau advanced courses. Courses focused in on just calculations in Tableau all the way through to Tableau prep. So we'd love to see you there. That would be super fun. And if you need any more help with your Tableau stuff, why not grab an office hour uh, and we'd be so happy to help. Awesome. So let's do this. Here's how we're going to put this all together. I'm going to drag max sales up here onto the rows shelf. So Tableau has generated its, uh, you know, kind of this weird graph for max sales. It's just a point. It's technically a line graph, right? Tableau's automatic one was line, uh, but it's just one point. Why? Because we've said the max sales uh, needs to, sum of sales needs to equal the max sales. Uh, and then return that sales value. That's exactly what Tableau's done. But here is the magic. We're going to drag this min sales over here. So over the axis, when it creates those two, you know, green bars side by side, maybe you've made a side by side bar chart before. It's the same technique. And we're just going to drop it in. And what that's going to do is Tableau has changed our max sales value on the rows shelf to measure values. Now, measure values, just a quick reminder, it's just a placeholder for uh, multiple measures that might be in your view. In our case, this measure values pill now contains the max sales and min sales values, which is awesome. And the reason why this is such a win is that now we can right click on our measure values pill and say dual access. So technically, we've dual accessed three different measures, right? We've created a dual access chart out of min sales and max sales and sum of sales, which is amazing. So that's just a helpful tip slash trick for your Tableau development in general. But for this view, it's also super useful. Now, for those of you who are used to dual access charts, you'll know probably the first thing that you're checking is, do I need to synchronize this axis? Yes, we do. So let's synchronize it and then uncheck show header. We don't need the headers for this example. Then the, the last couple of formatting tweaks that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this line under measure values to circle like that. So we actually get circular points, that's what I want. And then we can play with the colors if we wanna actually like those colors, that's quite nice. But if we wanted to change them, you just double click, 
choose a color palette that you like and you know get some of these going uh, we should probably do this the other way hey min sales and max sales something like that you're welcome to play with the size of those circles so we can increase those if we want really, really big everyone can see those and the last thing that we're going to do is just play around with our filter to double check that everything is working okay so that's great now just one troubleshooting thing that you might want to double check depending on your view uh, these window functions are table calculations so the reason why this filter works and the, the values update as we go is a window function is going to look at the data in your view and return, in our case, the window max uh, of the sum of sales. It, so it's looking at the data in our view, it's returning the maximum sales in our view. Now, when that uh, the information in the view changes because of the filter, that maximum value updates. Now, if your view is orientated differently and you wanna change the scope or the direction of your table calculation. Side note, if you don't know about scope and direction, why not check out this little video that we put together that might help you uh, help orientate you on table calcs. Uh, you can hit the drop down on either of these calculations, go to compute using, and then compute the, um, uh, you know, the relevant scope and, and direction. That might be something that might be helpful in the future if you, you know, if Tableau hasn't guessed the scope and the direction perfectly. Okay. Uh, just a side note at the end, if there's anything else that we can help with, any kind of follow-up questions on these, please do let us know. We'd love to, to help wherever we can. If you've got any recommendations for some videos or questions that you might have and you want us to cover, let us know in the comments below. But until then, hope this has been super helpful. Keep well.